robotics and mechanical engineering what can you do in the field of robotics coming from a mechanical engineering background hey everyone my name is kajal and i get this question a lot so for today's video i'm interviewing rishab a mechanical engineering graduate from iit bhu and a current robotics engineer at gray matter robotics in california in the first half of the interview we talk about his experience at iit bhu specifically the shell eco marathon and in the second half of the interview he's answering questions that were submitted by you including what to do in the field of robotics coming from a mechanical engineering background i'll include all of the timings in the description below so without further ado let's get into it So let's start with your experience studying mechanical engineering at IIT BHU. Well, it was great. I got to uh, participate in several competitions. Yeah, basically develop my competence in mechanical engineering, but my focus was always on robotics. So that was the kind of competitions I was going for. And apart from that, the academics they were pretty helpful in shaping my engineering mind. I guess the experience was pretty great. Nice. So you mentioned a competition to me before. Where you were part of an electrical vehicle competition? Can yeah. you tell us more about that? Yes, of course. So the competition was called the Shell Eco Marathon Asia, and I was part of uh, Team Aberera. People from IDBHU would know. So yeah, I was a part of that team. My uh, so uh, sorry, I need to interrupt. But can you talk about what the competition was? And we kind of mentioned the name, but for our viewers who don't know what it is about, can you tell about what was the goal or the challenge that you're trying to accomplish? Yeah, of course. So Shell Eco Marathon, um, yeah, it's in the name. It's Eco Marathon. So the objective was that whatever kind of powertrain you have, you need to make it as efficient as possible. Now there were different kinds of powertrains. There was ICE uh, internal combustion engine vehicles. Their objective was obviously fuel efficient. For us, our, ours was a battery electric vehicle. Ours was you know electrical efficiency. There were also hydrogen powered vehicles. There. Objective was again like how much power you can get out of how much height. Different kinds of power trains, one same objective, get as much efficiency as you can. So like you get to choose what type of vehicle you want to enter. Right, and like for each of these energy categories, like fuel, uh, battery electric, or hydrogen electric, you get to choose between prototype and urban. Uh, uh, urban, I think it's called urban vehicle. Basically, like normal vehicles that you see on the road versus any sort of shape you can make for your prototype vehicle. I guess for the prototype vehicles, the objective is to make them as aerodynamic as possible. You don't want any drag. You, you want to shut off as, as much drag as you want. So that's the, like, if you look at those two different kinds of vehicles, you'll see the obvious differences. For us, it was battery electric prototype vehicle. So we, our, our car was very aerodynamic and very electric. But was this the first time the university was participating, or they've been doing it for a while? The year I joined was the second year that they were participating in, and so yeah, we were still finding our way. We we're still finding our uh, rhythm, let's just say. Yeah. Um, and specifically, we were trying to find out find out what sort of technologies we need to work with in order to develop our vehicle. Uh, specifically, my responsibility was helping with the design and development of the motor controller. We were using a PLDC motor, so that needed a whole. Very complicated motor controller unit. That was my responsibility. It was quite amazing, uh, I'd say, because right in our second year we went from 11th position to third position. Wow. Uh, with all of the constraints that we had, like we were, we were based in Barnes, and we had not just financial constraints, but constraints such as uh, we didn't have access to many components that we needed, uh, electronic components that we needed. They weren't available in Barnes directly, so we had to. Shipped them either from the U.S. or other parts of India. So all of those things took time. So even with all of those hardships, we were able to achieve that position. So that was a now that was an amazing feeling when we could do that. And like, the following year, we came second. So that was even better. <laughs> nice. Well, congratulations on all of those accomplishments. Let's talk about some of the learnings you had from this experience. Yeah, of course. So the first thing I learned was hitting deadlines. Now it's a year-long project, so you want to be able to hit deadlines that you set for yourself. Maybe a week, maybe a month. Now all of these deadlines are not hard deadlines because it is, after all, a research project. You're not making a commercial product out of this, but you want to get something that works at least out of those deadlines. So that was one thing that I learned. Like perfection is the objective, but you can't always hit perfection. So you want to do as well as you can. So, did the competition themselves had certain milestones that you had to meet and kind of you know submit certain proposals, 
or team objectives and such, or you directly participate in at the end of the year? You have to provide them with certain proposals about the certain uh, designs that you, that you have made. You have to tell them that this is what you're working on and this is what your objective is, and then you participate. You don't actually, you know, you don't have to tell them that these are the components that you're using on and this is the design that you have. You don't have to tell them all of that. You just have to tell them that, okay, this is our car design. Uh, very broad, this will be the design of our car. Uh, they don't actually try to match anything. It's just that, it's just to see whether you're making any progress or not. Yeah, which is great, you know, kind of also helps you out. Yeah, yeah. And like that, the other thing was like, because we were so much resource constrained, it, the other thing we learned was how to deal with those kinds of problems and still carry on. Like you still need to, okay, if this isn't working, what else can work? So you have to figure that out. That's not something we learned in a class at all. Like, <laughs> at, in class, what you get is like, what's the perfect situation for this? And that's what, that's what you learn to do. When you're actually doing a project like this, a, you, you know, come up against so many hardships, you have to work around them, you have to work at least work with them uh, and figure out, okay, if this doesn't work, let's see if something else works. So now let's talk about what was your next plan? Most people, when they are at the last year of their undergrad, they're either deciding, do they want to pursue further education or do they want to go for placements? Where will you? Well, I was kind of in the middle. Beginning of uh, my final year, I was thinking about focusing on placements, but like, within a week or so I thought, you know, I want to do something more. Actually, that was a pretty late decision for me. Uh, I, I'd say I only gave myself like two months to prepare for GI, which is long, but it's not long enough for something like this. You still want to be mentally prepared for all, of all that's coming. But yeah, I had two months to prepare for GI. I think it went well. I'm yeah, here. it went well. But definitely here. So before we move on, I know we had some questions for you from our audience. So I want to ask you that. So one of the questions was, what's placement in IIT PHU for mechanical compared with CS? If you can share some insights. Yeah, of course. Okay, so I'm not going to uh, say anything that, that everybody knows is not true. So I'm going to tell you the truth. Uh, it is harder for mechanical engineering students to find jobs as compared to computer science students. I've seen computer science students getting placements right on the first day. Like 99% of them had placements, whereas only like... 30% of mechanical engineering students have jobs on the first day. So it's definitely harder, but that's only because of the times that you're living in. I have also observed that mechanical engineering students who knew coding found it easier to find jobs, again, sign of the times, and those who did not found it harder. It, they were, it wasn't impossible, but they did find it harder to find jobs. What I would suggest is if you don't like competitive coding, I know most people don't, many people don't like that, I didn't like that. Uh, what you can do is pursue certain interests that you have, uh, develop your experience, develop your competency, show that you can actually do real world work and that's the most important thing for companies. I mean, I know the first step when you go for these placement, placements is going through these coding tests, um, but trust me, if you can solve them even with like brute force coding, you're okay. You'll at least get to the next step when the, when the real thing starts when people when they ask you about like your experiences your the hardest problem you solve like if in an interview if they are asking you the hardest problem what was the hardest problem you solved you're not going to be talking about a problem you solved on hacker right you're going to be talking about a problem that you solved during a project or yeah something like that or the competition that you went there. exactly so you're going to be talking about some problem like that so you want to have such experiences so if competitive coding is not your thing don't worry you can still get uh take new jobs even with mechanical yeah, and that's perfect for the other question that we received. What if people don't like too much coding every day? What are the placement scopes without coding? Actually, I'm also in IIT BHU currently in second year. People here do competitive coding 24-7, which I don't like. What else technical jobs can we get? Also, I'm interested in graphical design and animation and video editing. So do companies come for campus placements? So yeah, if, as I said, if you don't like competitive coding, it's not the end of the world. Competitive coding is like one small thing that a programmer can have, like one small skill that a programmer can have. There are so many other things that uh, you want to have as an engineer. I, I heard uh, they want, they, they like graphic design. There are companies uh, that do front-end development who want graphic design, who want engineers who can also do graphic design. So that's uh, an amazing skill to have. And just to reassure people, one of my friends, he is working at Bosch, he's a software developer, he works on 
uh, software for automobile applications. That's a technical job as any other technical job. And he didn't do much competitive coding himself. Yeah, that's, that's not the end of the world. Don't worry about it. What you should be worrying about is developing your experiences, developing your competency, working with professors if you want, working with professors on certain projects that will help you, you know, develop uh, skills that you need for whatever job it is you want to do. Participating in projects, participating in competitions. It's gaining experiences that should be the objective. So, all right, one more question. Uh, being a mechanical engineering, what are the branches you can pursue if you're not interested in mechanical design? What if you're interested in working with the brain of the robot instead of designing its body? What subfields stand at an intersection of mechanical and software engineer? So you can be a software engineer but leverage your mechanical engineering background. And that's a very good question. As you may already know, mechanical engineering is a very nebulous branch of engineering. It's a, an extremely broad branch. If the question is what stands at the intersection of, say, software design and mechanical engineering, I'd say the biggest thing is controls. Uh, controls is pretty much the one thing that holds together autonomous systems, is at the center of it all. If you like software design and you can handle mathematics, you should go for controls. Controls is amazing. It's, it's very interesting. Controls is would be the thing for you. If that's not your thing, there are other things that, like for what I do, robotics, are, are important but not mechanical design. But one of those things is dynamics. If you're studying robotics, it, it'll be dynamics for robotic systems. You know, you, you want to study how moving fast would affect the various joints in your robot. And how, I mean, somebody else would design those things, but your task would be to figure out what would be the forces and torques on each of these joints. I'm going to too much specifics here, but... No, yeah. I would love those specifics. I think <laughs> that would be great for the audience, especially people who have that mechanical engineering background and don't want to go completely towards software engineering, but kind of find something in between. So please do continue. Okay, so yeah, I was saying dynamics is... Yeah, dynamics is pretty much that study of figuring out if your robot can handle the task that it's supposed to do. If it's going fast, how fast can it go? If it if it has to exert this much force, can it exert that much force? Then, like based on your findings, somebody else will do the design and then come back to you. You'll do the analysis. That's sort of the the kind of jobs that that you can get with dynamics. The thing that I'm doing currently is planning. That's more distance from mechanical engineering because planning is mostly motion planning. You're figuring out how to move the robot, not not necessarily if it can handle that. That's another thing that you can pursue. But as I said, like the first answer still holds controls. Like if, if you can handle mathematics, controls is amazing. And you should definitely try that out. Yeah, and controls, kinematics, dynamatics, dynamics, all those subfields are a really good combination of mechanical engineering and software engineering, even in the field of robotics. And one other thing I want to say about controls is, because it's mostly mathematics, even if you study it in mechanical engineering, you can apply the same principles if you're doing, if you're working on an electron, electrical engineering project. And vice versa, I guess. Controls, I, I know I'm like shilly for controls, <laughs> <laughs> but it's... We know your, what your preference is. <laughs> controls is pretty awesome. <laughs>